Hey there, it's Katrina Sawa here and I'm with jumpstartyourmarketing.com and I wanted to talk to you today about the fact that I'm not perfect. <laughs> I know um, it sometimes looks to new people that, oh my God, you're so amazing or you have so much success or you're probably making tons of money and look at your marketing and your website and la 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 and you're traveling everywhere, everybody knows you and that's all great. And a lot of that is very true, but I've been working at it though for 17 years in my own business, right? And before that, I had many jobs in sales and marketing and I was always, uh, had really good work ethic and worked really hard. Now, I'm not perfect because, um, <laughs> I just want to relate that to you because I think what's important is we see ourselves so different than the people that potentially we follow or we listen to. We think, well, we can never be like them because, insert your own excuse, right? Um, but I'll bet you I'm more like you than you think. Uh, I have. You know, I always wanted to be in the spotlight ever since I was an only child, by the way, up until age 10. Um, one thing that happened when I was six years old is my parents were divorced and my dad was coming to visit. And literally, he was two days late to pick me up. And I had no idea why. I felt that I felt abandoned. And when he finally came, I, I was too young to really understand it. But that whole sense of abandonment has followed me through my years uh, into an adult, obviously, just like a lot of the stuff that happens when we're kids. And so I always felt like I had to do it myself. So I had this thing about my ego. Well, I know what I'm doing and I'll take care of it or no one else can do it better than me. And so throughout my whole journey of whether it was an employee or especially in my business, you know, I let that in too much. I was too much of a control freak and I wouldn't let things go as far as passing them off to an assistant. Luckily, I got over that um, because uh, that is not a healthy way to run and, and grow a really successful business. Um, so I'm just letting you know some of the things, you know, that, that have gone on and, and I'm not perfect. I, I did marry the, uh, a man in the beginning who didn't end up being the right one for me, right? It was, it was fine for about eight and a half years, but we really grew apart and I realized that, um, uh, that it just wasn't a good fit. He didn't want to support me. Uh, in what I was doing when I started my business, I started my business when okay. I was in my first marriage. A lot of you ask uh, what it, where the where the last name Sawa comes from, actually, and it's my ex husband was Canadian, and so he's he was a Knack and uh, more Ukrainian, I think, and so that's where the name came from because I already branded myself right as Katrina Sawa, so I'm not going to change my name back to Lorenzen for God's sakes, which was my maiden name. So anyways, on a side note, he's a great guy, but you know, I've, I've been through that divorce process. I've, I've uh, dated a lot of the wrong guys as well. I had to actually do a lot of work on myself internally as far as finding my current husband, Jason. So I did a lot of relationship uh, exercises and workshops and coaching and things like that to make me a better person so that I could attract a better person that was a better fit for me. So these are just some of the things that I've gone through through my life and my journey as an entrepreneur, frankly, this whole that whole love thing. I mean, that's why I talk about love and money. That's why I have a book about love um, and loving yourself successful. It has to do with that love side of your life because I learned a lot of lessons over there in the personal side of your life. And some of you think, oh, she just focuses on marketing or business stuff or websites or whatever. And I do do a lot of that. I am focused on helping people get in front of, you know, make more money, right? And that involves the doing in your business. But the being in your business is just as important as the doing. But some people are being too much and not doing enough. And some people are doing too much and not being enough. And that was me um, up until about 2008 or nine as I was doing everything, but I wasn't being. So I really learned a hard lesson in 2008 that, uh, yeah, I needed to be more in my business. And so that's one thing I love to impart on clients when I coach with them. So if you're just reading my emails and things like that or seeing my videos on YouTube, you may not really know the depth of really where I go, especially with a client, uh, whatnot, and, and my experience, how, how broad and expansive it is. Um, I don't just focus on one little area. 
it's looking at everything you do in your business and how it all flows together because it is so important to building a much more consistent money-making business. So there's all these mistakes. I've also invested in a lot of mentors and masterminds and workshops, and some have proven very fruitful, and some, all of them got me to where I am today. Um, but I've had a lot of things where people say, well, I can't do something right now, or I have an excuse because of this is happening in my life. Well, life happens, right? Life happens, and I've had it happen too. I had parents die on me. I've had dogs die. I've had uh, investments go south, right? It's to the tune of like $50,000 with an ex-boyfriend, right? So I've had huge financial endeavors go bad on me. I've had um, uh, a lot of good things, of course, but I'm mentioning the bad because sometimes you look at someone and you don't realize all the things they've had to go through and endure. I've had two total hip replacement surgeries, you guys, during the time I had my business and I didn't go out of business. I still kept, because I had systems in place and the right ongoing marketing and, and programs. Um, now I'm in an amazing marriage with an amazing guy who totally supports me and he just started his own business. I was able to, I'm doing well enough to where we allowed him to quit, not allowed him, but I, allowed him the opportunity to quit his job uh, sooner than later and he's excited about starting his new venture and so you know we got to look at all of that in our life and I just want what it comes down to is this I believe that being successful takes a lot of different things as an entrepreneur it takes drive and motivation you got to be hungry you know you got to be hungry if you're not hungry then you might have a hobby which is fine but if you're hungry and serious and really want to go places or change lives, I would hope and pray that you want to do anything and everything to get to that stage to where you can do that, right? It also takes know-how. You got to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, what it takes. You got to know at least the the systems, the processes, the, the big picture of how things all flow and how it all works together, so your business and all your operations and everything, so that you can be a smooth running machine. If you say, la, 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 I don't want to know that, then you're, then you're avoiding um, really being serious about being an entrepreneur. you got to have the know-how. You don't have to do it all you got to have the know-how. Then you got to get some help. You can't you got to get beyond your own ego and control freak itis and get some help around something, some areas in your business. And you got to be organized. Oh my god, you got to be super super organized. And I am super organized, although there's a few little areas that that need some tweaking and I need my team to do certain things and right now I'm looking for new some new team members by the way, if anybody's out there that might be interested. Um, you can reach out to me, but you got to be organized. If you are not organized with your computer, your calendar, your schedule, your this, your appointments, your paperwork, your office, your your filing, your clients, uh, you're gonna you're not gonna build the kind of business that you really want to build. And then, of course, we have to implement in order of importance. Too many people draw at squirrels here and there, and they're not doing things in order of importance in order to reach your goals. So sometimes I have a coaching client for three or four years, and the things that we work on in year three, I, I know that we're going to work on them in year one, but they're not ready for them sometimes until year three, and they may not realize that, but I know that there's an order of importance based on their goals, and so that's when I introduce them, or I say, hey, you're not ready for that now. Right now, we have to focus here, here, and here. So I just wanted to throw that out today to help introduce you to me a little bit more, some of the journey that I've been on, and I'll, I'll keep continuing to tell you more stories and stuff like that um, as we go on in the emails and stuff like that. But reach out. I'm, I am an open book, and I love to answer questions, and I love to interact with any of you who are willing to say hello and actually pay attention and respond back. So have a great day, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.